When most people hear the term IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, they probably imagine a long list of names. However, the IUCN Red List is actually so much more than just a list. In fact, we like to think of it as a kind of barometer, a barometer of life, if you will. Barometers are instruments that measure atmospheric pressure. By forecasting changes in the weather, they help us prepare for storms and prevent catastrophes. As a barometer of life, the IUCN Red List measures pressures on species. This in turn helps guide appropriate conservation actions to prevent extinctions. Of course, to really understand the global importance of the IUCN Red List, we need to get inside it. The IUCN Red List already includes extinction risk assessments for over 70,000 species, so it certainly is long. However, it's the depth and substance of the list that makes it such an important tool for scientists, educators, conservationists, policymakers, and the public. Inside the IUCN Red List is a wealth of information. Along with its current status, you will discover where the species occurs, what threats are affecting it, what habitats are essential for its survival, and conservation actions needed to protect the species and its ecosystems. You can even encounter good news, such as which species are improving in status and why. Yes, this is a lot of information to compile. Fortunately, IUCN works with a global network of specialists who gather data and carry out assessments. As a barometer of life, the IUCN Red List assesses and monitors the status of entire groups of species. Each year, more assessments are added, continually improving the IUCN Red List's ability to represent the world's biodiversity. Our target is to assess at least 160,000 species, so there is always a lot more work to be done. The IUCN Red List is such a powerful tool that it is used by the Convention on Biological Diversity to help monitor the status of threatened species. Most countries in the world have agreed on a plan to stop biodiversity loss. For them, the IUCN Red List is an essential resource to help highlight where their efforts are succeeding and where they are not. The IUCN Red List is an increasingly diverse and powerful tool, but it can sometimes be misunderstood. For instance, some people believe that it lists only threatened species. In 1964, the IUCN Red List set out to identify only the most threatened plants and animals, but now it contains both threatened and non-threatened species. In fact, it includes all species that have ever been assessed, even those that are widespread. Another common mistake is that if a species is not listed, it must not be threatened. Wrong. Not being on the IUCN Red List only means that the species hasn't been assessed yet. And unfortunately, we don't have enough resources to constantly know the status of every species. Therefore, an unlisted species may be threatened. We just don't know yet. Misconceptions such as these can lead people and organizations to misuse the IUCN Red List. So let's look at an example of the IUCN Red List being used. These people are involved in a roadway project that will cut across an entire region. However, they don't want their project to harm any threatened plants or animals in the area. The IUCN Red List can quickly identify globally threatened species that might occur in the region. Surveys can then confirm their presence in the area, allowing these species to be considered in an environmental impact assessment. Remember, the IUCN Red List tells us about global extinction risk. To refine a species list for a specific area, other tools must also be used. Things like national red lists, local surveys, national conservation priority lists, and consultations with species experts. Now you can see why we call the IUCN Red List a barometer of life. When used properly, it truly is a powerful tool. Learn more about the IUCN Red List at iucnredlist.org.